and it's Gordo, Gordo's Games, and we're back with some more Digimon TCG content today. Um, we're going to be doing deck profile for Bielsma, going into BT12. Now, it's going to be one of the most anticipated decks, one of the strongest decks, and generally just an all round problem for the meta to deal with. Um, a lot of reasons why, but we'll go through that. Now, this deck profile is going to be a little bit different. Um, I am going to go through a few things overall with the deck my list as well i'll have that link in the description down below if you do just want to skip ahead to that part but i'll go going through some of the the deck techs things to potentially counter the deck and generally trying to go as much detail as i can around the archetype itself so if you do like this style of deck profile let me know in the comments below otherwise let's jump right into it and don't forget to like come subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you know when this content goes live for you so going to the X first of all, I've got three options I'm going to bring up here for you, which is the BT2 Pokemon, the ST6 Pokemon, and the Yarmon from the Bielsmon Starter. They all have a strong place on the deck, but with all very different reasons for choice. The best one out of the three is by far the Unle hey, Unleash and Trash Top 2 guys your deck Pokemon, uh, because in the right scenarios that can offer you a lot of tempo to try and push your games out as quick as possible, which is what Bielsmon's main aim of the game is. Depending on your playstyle and how you, if you don't like to leave yourself with targets on board where you can potentially be decked out by your opponent, um, things like the Pokemon and Yarmon can facilitate in those those areas. Overall, I do think uh, a lot of it comes down to your resource management, how well you keep an eye on things in your deck, how many cards left in your deck, for instance, using Dorian and Mako to put cards back to the top of the deck as well as your Wizardmons. And overall, does come a, a lot of that does come into play as to how you would uh, set up your lineup with things, even even small things like your X, which normally would be just run a 4 of and you're fine. Um, but I run a 4-1, I'm considering a 3-2 because it has come up a point where I have been decked out more than I'd like to be. So it is there, definitely room for test in there to go with it. But all of these three do offer a strong position to the deck and do offer different mechanics on how you would play the deck. Um, but let's go into level 3s now. And starting off with the MVP when it comes to the Bonds, this is one of the new ones that you get from the start of ST14, which we had access to in the last set. Um, but it really is the fundamental piece for the deck. It allows you that tempo to boost from level 3 to level 6 to impact the board with things like the X2 Bielsamon, uh, the start deck Bielsamon, and then being able to go into our new uh, boss piece, which is Bielsamon X Anti. So, really, the card is the key part you have to raise a four of. There's not much more to say about that one. But moving into the next areas of the months, um, again, these are all very, very strong. They're just uh, strong for different reasons. So, start with the BT2 Impmon, EX2 Impmon, and then Impmon X Anti. These three cards, I mean, we want to have to see as many Impmons as possible because they, they thrive in the deck. You know, we have ways to fetch some of our Iron Macos. But not just that, they all add to the uh, end goal, your your win con. BT to win one, you need to see him first hand or second. Just as early as possible, swing, you get that chip damage. Trash cards in your deck, just keep filling that trash until you have that those magic numbers to be able to trash the last couple of security with the in my Xanti. So if you see that and uh, with the ST6 Paku, you're trashing five cards. So it's a great first. Uh, to second turn card to see. The EX to it one is a little bit different. If you see it, it's fine, you can go into it and you know, make use of it that way, but otherwise you want to see it on top of the deck. You want to be uh, hitting that off mills, so that the mills are another three, and you can elect to um, mill up to three. So you can pick zero, let's say if your resource management is looking low. So you can look to go, I'll elect out mill zero, Great, that's fine. It stops you from just decking yourself up unnecessarily. And then finally, we have the new one is in one Xanti. Now, this card allows us a, a few different plays because it's a four cost, which is interesting. Uh, it does get around things like Ultimate Flare. I know it's not played as much as it used to be, but there are still decks that use it. So, if you have Evo your stack normally and your bottom stack is an in one X, does mean they basically won't delete it. Even if you have the, the other in one below it, it would stop at that in one X. And not go any further, so that's, all, that's uh, always handy to know. But it allows us to take cards out of hand, so on play or when did you roll it, you can pitch an option to then add back an evil wizard or demon lord, I believe it is. So it allows us to fix our hand in bad situations, or it can just be there to choke. You're probably pushing you to two, three, you've got your starter deck in one of raising, you don't want evil on top of it, 
throw this down, put them to one. Its overall flexibility of the card is very good, and it's very good with the next consistency as well. A couple of honorable mentions to throw in here, um, so Gazi one and Psych one. Now the deck you do have a lot of it months than it which do take a lot of space. I currently run 16 in my list, as I said links down below. Um, so I'm running four of each ones that I've mentioned. Um, you can lock to change up some of those ratios if you do feel that's a bit too much on that side. To add the control element to things like uh, just that cross hearts, death X, um, any kind of memory gain, so uh, memory boost, etc. So they are still viable in this deck and yeah. Uh, well worth the spot if you feel like you do need those in your current meta now but I would say they are meta dependent. So moving into level 4s now, these, now this the level 4 and 5 slots I'm going to be quite brief on because I don't, there's much to explain with them. They are kind of mandatory. So we don't root 4 of the Wizardmon promo, when this guy is trash me deck, gain 1 memory. This is your memory game, this is your take back turns if something gets deleted on board and it also has the 1 attack you may reveal 1 powerful card from your hand return it to the top of your deck. So this allows you to just stack the top of your deck so if you are going to start trashing. Um, to follow on from that, going into BT12 support, we have got the Wizard X Anti, uh, which does have a couple of nice little features for it. So when did you evolve it? Trash top two cards of your deck. If you have X Anti or Wizard Mod in stack, this uh, Digimon Games blocker into the end of your uh, end of your next turn, or any opponent's set turn, should I say. So you can get blocker, which is great. It's not really massive. You are that usually really for the trash too, but it's a Digivolve Zero on a Wizard one. So we're allowed to cycle through our pieces quicker and quicker and quicker. And even if you wanted to swing with a Wizard Mon X anti, we could trigger the effect of the Wizard Mon to then put some on top of the deck. And then if we get deleted, the Pokemon to trash two cards would come into effect. So it, they do work and synergize quite well. And do you feel like these are the fundamental ones? I don't feel like Dover one of that have a place anymore overall on the deck, um, these just do enough. And then I do run a, a one of low in one. So, so in over, overall I run uh, one low in one, four, uh, three wizard one X anti and four wizard one promo. You can swap the low in one out for the fourth wizard X anti. Uh, I just felt like having that hyper for game can really come up on occasions. So that's the smart I've been testing and it has would be a few games overall. Now moving into the level fives, these uh, this is a pretty simple one overall. We run four battle one. Well, this is all we ran back in the last set four BLs one because this is just the best one you want to see. Um, we've now got the support BT12 battle one X anti, which does help the deck out an awful lot. And with this battle one X anti, you can digivolve for zero on top of a battle one. Uh, you can trash the further three cards, and if you have battle one in stat, you can then delete a level four. So if you have an X anti or a battle one in stat, you can delete a level four or lower. So it just gives a little bit more control on board, a little bit of deletion, and also trashes more as well. And it does give another 2k buff as an inheritable, which allows us to get a little bit bigger so we can swing over the big stacks if we need to. But overall, it's just a very strong card for towards that win kind of trash, 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 trash. Another one mention I do want to bring up here is BT10 Battle 1. Now again, this is more of your play style if you do feel like you're a bit more reserved in wanting to bring out your stacks and that, and if you want to build up something arrays and then start doing more control trashing, you can use the Battle 1 for that sort of thing. Um, to keep in mind, the Battle 1 uh, from the starter deck gains the inherent heavy when digivolving. If it's deleted and you have 10 in trash, you can then play out BL's one. The BT10 Bound one only has it printed on the card, it isn't gained, um, so it would only be the case of if that Digimon is hit by that. The view of the Bound one from the starter deck is even if you're Digivolved, you would still get the trigger for it. Even if you Digivolve up, you would still get the trigger for it. So if you go into Bielsmon, swing and then it dies, you can then actually just still play out the Bielsmon off the back of the, Biel uh, the Bound one's effect. It's always good to keep in mind, um, but the BT10 Bound one is there for more reserved control players who would don't want to give your opponent stacks on board just to get rid of but the options are there's definitely some flexibility but the four bound one from the start deck are mandatory so going into the level sixes now so we do run the ex2 bls and one we're in two of them we run two of the starter deck bls and one and we run one bl star now the ex2 bls one is probably is one of the great control cards allows you to delete bodies on board when attacking when digivolving when trash lets you play out in monsters great for just board presence as well as just out of the blue you know just taking out two stacks potentially because if you're late in the game if you trash enough stuff it can lock the delete for level fives and six is just on swing or when digivolving which is a great tempo play 
run two of the EX2, uh, not EX2, I mean the starter PLs, which I, I wish I had copies of that one. Um, the card itself is just great momentum. Being able to trash and gain security attack plus one, as well as you know, trash top four cards you don't want Digivolve in. You know, it's really, it's just that a massive uh, game for yourself there because four cards is an awful lot to be trashing. You pair that with the BL Star as well because the BL Star effect is if you, when a card is trash, you can play an Impmon from trash and it gains rush. This is why we do surplus on the Impmon just more than anything. And you know, that gains rush, so you can go into this Star Deck one, which will then you go then go into another BLs when you swing, pay the three. You can go into another Star Deck one, trash four cards, gain some more memory, and allows your turn to be extended by a great deal. And you will look, look to trash a lot of things, and your potential triggers there, you know, gaining memory, popping things on board. Overall, there's a lot of RNG involved with it, but these all all these cards coming, uh, really do offer different parameters of the deck. It did used to be more of a case, you just ran more of the X2 BLs, uh, but I do feel you're looking for more of an even split now because your win con changed from just being blast mode for game. You do have the BLs and XNT to go into. Speaking of BLs and XNT, I mean, sorry. <laughs> Yes, I mean Sephiroth, the winged demon himself, Beelzman XNT. The win con all on its own. When did you want if this one has Beelzman or XNT in its name, uh, in its distribution cards? For every 10 cards in your trash, you can tra uh, trash the top card of your opponent's security stack. So you have 10 cards, that's one trash. You have 20 cards, that's two trash. That is a lot of tempo you're taking there. Uh, if you're secure at control matchups, your mass day matchups, anything that generally has security bombs just become that less threatening. As long as you're trashing cards in your deck, they you don't have to worry so much about hitting, let's say for example, Crimson Blades or multiple tamers for hunter decks or cross hearts decks. You can just go ahead, Evo, trash, and then swing with the potential chance to hit less threatening things. Or swing for game because you just trash the entirety of their security. Um, most often, you usually trash in two things, like uh, two security normally. It's pretty easy for the deck. Anything over that is when you start to run low on your resources overall, and it's probably a little bit more risky. You shouldn't have closed the game a little bit earlier than that. But Beelzman X Anti itself is a very, straight, very, very strong win con. Um, pair it up with the last card here on the Digimon side of things. And you just generally have multiple ways in this deck just to try and close the game out. Things like low one, BLs mode, X anti, and the blast mode, as I just mentioned. I run this as a one-off in the deck, and that's purely because BLs X anti kind of has taken over for the finishers because it's a little bit more consistent to do overall. Um, but yeah, overall still a strong card, so one-off in there. Uh, moving on from that, going to the tamers, I do run four iMac of three cost one. Now I don't run the four cost one because we only run the one blast mode. We have more than enough ways to trash in this deck, um, but the three cost one allows you to fix your hand, put cards back in your deck so you don't deck yourself out, and really kind of control keeping plays on your turn. So using the bound one, um, draw for the Digivolve, trigger the Iamako, put a card on top. You can then trash, and you know that's what the top one's going to be, so you'll get your good and your overall value back from it. So Iamako is a really really strong card. Moving on from that, we'll just close up the options here, then we'll go through just a few final thoughts. So, options. So for me, I I'm, I run th three Rivals Barrage, four Death Slinger, and I run a one of Night Raid. Uh, three Rivals Barrage, because I do run one of the new options, BT12, which we'll go through in a second. Four Death Slinger, because it's mandatory. You need memory going to this deck. It takes turns back, it extends your turn. It's a great removal card for four cards. It's ridiculous, in fact. It's a base level 4, every 10 cards after that, one level higher. So you're taking out large stacks for next to no effort on your part. Now I do run a 1 of 9 raid. Um, there are those that run things like, um, oh, what's the card? Miss Memboos, which allow you to trash two cards, draw a card, um, just try to extend out your turns. But I feel I don't feel as I have having the time to do that. I have enough ways to trash, and I just feel like I just trash it more than I see it. Same with Night Raid, it gets trashed. If it gets in security, I get a body out, I get it one out of nowhere. If I uh, see it in hand, I can pay two to bring it in one from back from trash, and sometimes it helps when I miss my level three. Let's say they hit one in security, I haven't seen a rookie. Night Raid for two, bring back the rookie, Evo on top of it. So it's helped me out of a few bricks before. Uh, moving into the other option. Now this is a card I've had a few issues with, seven full cluster. Um, I have a few issues with because I always miss the timing out or miss the trigger for it. So it's whenever you would digivolve into a Bielsman X Anti, you can place this card from 
your trash back into your into your bomb your deck and you would delete the lowest play cost. So it's another form of removal, but it's not happening from security time before it's in trash and you evo into your build to make sense. So you're getting almost a deletion clause like someone like Gamma would get when evo into one of their big stacks and removing a body of board, which is great tempo, um, great board control, and it's also putting cards back in your deck, which is overall not a bad thing when you've just almost decked yourself out and that one card could come up. Um, don't get me wrong, um, I haven't run the one off. I haven't found a massive need to remove it because Rival's Barrage is just too strong being able to fix my hand in bad situations. So I run a one off at this point. A few honorable mentions I do want to uh, go through on the option side of things and then we'll wrap this up. Uh, so first one, Demonic Disaster allows you to uh, delete one of your Digimons and suspend one of your Digimon. So if you've had to play some out from a BL's one uh, trash, you can then delete that to re-stand your Digimon that's ready on board so it lets you push out the game sooner. If you have the start at BL's, you could be doing potentially four damage in one swing, uh, in two swings technically. After that we got back for revenge, you can use it on the bound ones if you swing, die, BL's one gets played out, bound one gets re played out, you can even max on top of it. So it just allows you to do that a little bit more with your turns. And then finally after that, we have Miss Memory Boost. Um, gives you two memory on the delay effect, allows you to trash two cards on top of your deck and you draw a card, so you can cycle cards into your hand as well. Um, overall the card's very strong, very good for the deck, uh, this is commonly more used to some of the other things like Night Raid, Back Revenge, things like that, um, but I do think these all hold a good merit in the deck itself. So that's my bit, uh, my deck profile for it, as the, the list is on the screen now, and a uh, link will be down in the, uh, in the description below. Um, let me know your thoughts, take on the deck, and if you have any input, or if you've done any testing for yourself, I'd love to see how, how this has turned out for others. In testing has performed for me very well overall. Uh, a few things to watch out for with the deck itself, some weaknesses like against things like Machine Drummond can be a pretty bad matchup because there's the, so much anti to the deletion. Your, uh, your best way to get around things like that is to more or less ignore them and just try and ship out their security as much as possible. Or you get your BLs on X anti to go ahead and do that as well. Um, so realistically, that one's a problematic one. Analog mana is probably the biggest problem as to why we struggle with that one so much because the key redirect is a little poke. Um, outside of that, Omnimon Merciful mode, may, you may see a spike in on the basis that it allows you to put 10 cards back in it from Digimon. Um, it doesn't sound like a bad thing at first glance for Beelzemon, but the fact is if they put all your Beelzemons back into your deck and then you want to try and trigger your starter deck in one, you've got no targets, you're missing out on all the triggers and you can't then uh, look to take control of the board again because you're too far behind. You have to have a look to evo into it normally, which is impractical because you need it in trash to trigger for the effect. Um, other things, security control isn't a big, a big problem more. It used to be a case of recovery used to hurt the other one just purely on the, the fact of their tempo they would just recover and you just, you'd run out of steam and then you'd come to a halt those kind of matchups are your bread and butter to say well um you keep trashing their security so they're not going to get many procs out of it they're not getting the tamers out as much overall it's just generally more favorable in your, in your direction so there are pros and cons going into the next step but overall bl's one definitely is a tier one deck and is a strong contender throughout the net and you will see a lot of it uh, my advice is get practicing that mirror overall if you do enjoy the deck profile don't forget to like comment subscribe hit that bell for notifications so you know when this content goes live for you and as i said please let me know down in the comments below if you want to see more profiles like this please go into more more detail around these decks instead of just giving you a list and saying have fun catch you next time